All right, everyone. Today we're looking at what I have said is the most boring car you can possibly imagine. It's a 2002 Nissan Cedric, also known as the Nissan Gloria. This particular one is in hideous beige, which is really the worst possible color for this car. This is a non-turbo. Inside it has the vinyl interior, vinyl fabric, and it's got these sweet, sweet covers on it. I know, you're pretty jealous. So we're gonna take this thing for a spin here in a second. Let's have a quick look under the hood. VG Neo DI. Yeah. Pretty blah car. All right, let's take it for a spin. Hey everyone, Ben here. How's it going? Man, it's been a while. I bet you guys are like, what happened to Ben? What happened to the sweet videos you used to film all the time and give to us? And I'm like, well, I've been busy doing things, being cool. Unlike you guys, are just sitting there on your keyboards waiting for a new video. Type, 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 type. So, here we go. Boom. Yeah, we're in a 2002 Nissan Cedric, also known as the Nissan Gloria. Also known as the boringest car ever made. Well, this version is. This car literally is so boring. I discussed the outside of the car already, as you saw. It's super bland. It's Asian beige. It's no discerning features. It's got hubcaps. Ugh, so boring. Inside of the car is actually not too bad. Still pretty boring color, very blah. It's got these awesome seat doilies here. It's got some compartments. This here for your sweet uh, car phone, which I don't have. Uh, more compartments here. Compartments down here compartments here this one opens up Ooh, they open up nice and slow because you know when a compartment lid opens slow that means it's fancy fast opening lids not cool slow opening that's fancy even the glove box shh, opens nice and slow speaking of glove box it's got like four different compartments in there very useful so what's the neat features about this car it has a cool display here built into the dash which is pretty neat uh, the only not cool thing about it is that it is a hundred percent in Japanese So if you're like me and you can barely speak one language English That doesn't help me Right now it's on the sweet uh, GPS mode It says we're driving down this green road here in the middle of nowhere in Japan and uh, Yeah, you can press some buttons you can change some stuff the climate control is dual zone left to right um, which is controlled up there as well. That you can kind of do because it's kind of obvious, you know, hot, cold, plus, minus, that kind of thing. But anything else, you can't figure it out if you can't read Japanese. It has a built-in TV, which doesn't pick up uh, stations here in Canada. And it has a clock up here, which you can't change because the clock is set via the internal GPS built into the car and it thinks it's always in Japan. So the clock is always showing Japan time, which I guess is useful if you need to know what time it is in Japan. So like right now it's 6.09 a.m. in Japan. People are just getting up from their sleeping. But yeah, this car has 33,000 kilometers on it, which is really the reason I bought it. I bought it for two reasons, low miles, low price. This car came from B Forward. Every once in a while, B Forward sells cars for a dollar, one dollar. Well, it's not one dollar, it's one US dollar. So, you know, like one dollar and 30 cents Canadian, depending on the exchange rate. So that price doesn't include shipping, doesn't include any of that kind of stuff. So you pay a dollar for the car, then you gotta pay for shipping, then customs and yada, yada, yada. 
but it's still a pretty good deal. And since the car only has 30,000 K on it, I figured, eh, what the heck. I could use a boring, bland car that's really cheap for a road trip. So let's talk about comfort. This has the uh, three liter uh, VQ Neo DI motor. It's a V6 motor. Uh, the Nissan made the VQs as a successor to the VG motors, and the VQs are good motors in my opinion. The VGs were kind of annoying. VQs, pretty nice. <coughs> it's pretty smooth actually on the highway. So for road trips, it's going to be comfortable. It's got a half decent amount of leg room for me as a tall person. Look, head's not touching the ceiling. I don't have a crazy gangster lean going on here. The seats are pretty supportive, even though they're not the prettiest seats. I mean, the doilies make them pretty, but they're not, you know, they're not super fancy or whatever, but they definitely, they support your lower back nicely. I think if you sit in them for a long time, you know, in this scenario, I'm going to be driving to Vegas. I'm going to take this to Vegas on a road trip. Um, and Las Vegas is about a 23 hour drive from here. So I think I'll be pretty comfortable on the drive. It's pretty smooth. The suspension is nice. The road noise is reasonable. It, uh, I just put on some different tires, some Michelin Hydro Edge tires, and they're a little bit louder, but I got them for a good price, so I don't really care. Anyways, I've been babbling on about a lot of things, but I'm back. I got a bunch of cars to make videos on for, so I'm gonna try and do it. This isn't the greatest car to make a video for for my return to my YouTube video channel, but whatever. I'm not gonna make a video as complicated. Too much editing, I'm way too lazy for that. So they're gonna be the simple format I've been following for years. And then love it or hate it, that's the way it's gonna be. So thanks for watching, thanks for wasting your time. I hope you waste more time with me later. Peace.